cultivate, elevate, you're not gonna wanna miss this. All the stuff that you think about, all the stuff that you wonder about, all the mysteries, uh, Matt reveals these mysteries on a daily basis and I'm super excited to talk to him. Cultivate Elevate is somebody who I've been following for a long time and when I wanna figure something out, um, he's already done the research. Well, we're having a talk today. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you could do me a favor, give me a bunch of, uh, uh, sorry, give me a bunch of likes and send this off to someone that, that you like right now. Tell them that we're here. This is going to be a wild conversation. Cultivate, elevate, coming in. <clears throat> Put down, if there's something that you want to know, if you're a follower of Cultivate, Elevate, put down if there's something that you want to know uh, about Matt or about what he does about any of his research. We're gonna be opening up some topics here and delving into the, the uh, unknown or the known or the forgotten. <clears throat> How do you get rid of water-filled breast cysts? Um, actually, uh, astral maneuvers. Um, but you gotta get, you gotta get the, there we go. You gotta get, um, with the fashion maneuvers, you got to get the hydration power curve, get the 28 day reset bundle. Oh, unable to, Hey Matt, can you just uh, put, um, uh, put something in the, I try to try to bring you up, put some, something in the comment and I can bring you up through the feed. Sometimes it gets stuck. So just say, Oh, here, here we go. Hey Matt. Bada boom. Bada boom. What, How are you doing? What's going on? Good. How are you? So? Good. Super excited to talk to you. I mean, uh, I feel like I know you so well because I, uh, I watch you every day. It's been it's been crazy. The the videos with the uh, with the, the the iodine talking about the cysts and everything, they've been just going crazy. So I'm happy that the message is getting out there, and happy that you're tuning in, and you know the information gets out. Yeah, there. actually, someone was just asking about cysts, and uh, you know it's funny because all the uh, I mean anything that that's healthy for the body. I mean, anything that's truly healthy for the body is something that's hidden and sheltered and, uh, and illegal. Like when we talk about boron, boron is one of the most important minerals for the body. But if you put it in the formax of borax and you, uh, and you tell somebody to take it, it's against the law. Yes, yes. The, the whole thing that people can look into on that one is the borax conspiracy. And that document that goes into about the fellow who was in the 1980s who was selling borax in capsule form, and he was healing everybody's arthritis and osteoporosis because he learned that it would pull all the fluoride out of the body and start mineralizing the bones. Because like you said, if we're missing that one mineral, the body just begins to fall apart and it'll take from one area and then pull from all these other areas. And then you don't address the root cause because you're just missing boron you know <laughs> just like so really I, simple things i have an nih report that talks about boron and the importance of it so i can send it over to him yeah it's a, it's you I, yeah that would be great and it's just it's it's remarkable i i went down that rabbit hole a while ago and then now the uh, florida poison control and a bunch of other people they all kind of came out and said you know borax is all dangerous mm -hmm. and all this other stuff but it's funny because it's just salt you know yeah. and i if, if how can salt be dangerous you know table salt though which is loaded with heavy metals can be but you know borax on the other hand it just comes from the lake beds you know it's just the the, the top that's on the lake bed so so what I, I tell people is i take boron every day it's an important element i give them an na nih report on boron and i said do your research on where to get it because uh boric acid borax is are different places and and we don't tell anybody how to take it but what i do is i take it every day <laughs> like that and there's a there's a great website earthclinic.org they have a great thing on borax where people can learn more on that but it's interesting because borax and apple cider those pull nanos out of the body you know all the more gallons and all of that nonsense and we know who just bought up all the largest apple cider vinegar company mr okay. gates you know good old mr gates and you know if you have the borax over here you know you can pull those nanos out of the body but i can't tell you that one because you know, it's always got to be false and misleading information. <laughs> That's what so. You know, you know, it, it, it's funny because, yeah, I mean, we, we brush up against that a lot. But what we 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 have, we, we walk this borderline and it's and and we purposely push the edge, just things that we know. 
And the only thing we talk about is things that we personally done. And, and so, so I can say from my, my background is always, I did this myself. Here's my team did this. And this is what we found. And we've had this many people, hundreds or thousands that have reported this to us. And that's, that's a, it's just a way, you know, like we don't have to push against the bear all the time. We can yeah. just state the facts. And if we talk the way, if we talk the right way, actually, for the most part, they just leave us alone. I, I completely agree with you. And I, that's what I've learned to do is just put the information out there. And I hope that it resonates. And I hope that someone can look it up and learn. Because you have to also learn yourself. Because if me and you just say everything, you know, and yeah. say this is what it is, then you're not really learning anything and you're not really understanding it, yeah. you know? And that, that's the other part. I think, there, I think that's such a missing part, you know, because sometimes with social media, we can get access to so much information, but if we don't physically sit down, read a book or a paper and kind of take that in, then it's really not being fully absorbed into the mind. Well, that, I mean, <clears throat> our whole program is, what we've done is we've taken millions of people around the world and we've turned them into citizen scientists. What they're doing is, they are learning how their body works in a new way based around a belief system we have and they're testing and what we have is we get between 400 and a thousand people every day to comment or on what they're going through so in about a year we have the largest database of people in the world of people uh, reporting on all kinds of different health issues and and it's their reporting so you can't like if we claim there's an issue but if they if people are reporting to us I can read people's reports all day long well and I th think that's important because then people are seeing the true side of something because a lot of the stuff too like even when you go through Google there's a lot of false information stuff that you know they just put there but when you get people who are actually saying it from them you know their their testimonial it speaks in volumes and you can't deny all of those testimonials you know if a thousand people uh, or let's say a hundred, you know, people used borax, and let's say there was a ninety-five percent efficiency rate, or that it worked really well for them. How can you deny it? That's using science. You know, the whole thing that we're taught about using experiments. So, you know, it's beautiful that you're spreading the information, and then people are voicing their opinions, so that people can get feedback from that. Because I think that's the most important. Because there's <laughs> there's also a lot of nonsense on the other side, which you know just keeps regurgitating that all of the things which are safe and effective are actually the opposite, but they repeat it so much to try to ingrain it into the mind. So um, I hear you talking about pearl powder a lot. So pearls are pretty, pretty magical. I mean, when you get into this, I mean, I got into pearl powder about a year ago. Uh, when I was looking into it, it was absolutely remarkable. Everything I read about healing the eyes, there was a, uh, there was a professional who used pearl powder on her patients and they had cataracts and they talked about that in 60 days about 70 percent of their patients were healed using pearl powder for their cataracts and i thought that's interesting because when i was learning about my eyes like say let's say having light eyes you know they say that your eyes are falling apart and it's genetic and they just get worse and worse over time and many family members I know, our eyesight got worse and worse over time. And then you get thicker and thicker glasses and, they, you know, keep going thicker and whatever else. But they never improved. So when I got into learning about pearl powder, I realized that we could heal our eyes. We're self-regenerating beings. Sure. And what's interesting about pearl is that it contains 2% structured water, which is the same water that's needed for the eyes. It has a bunch of different amino acids and a bunch of selenium and magnesium and calcium carbonate and all these beautiful minerals that help nourish the eyes. And we've had a ton, just like we were talking about now, testimonials where people are going to the eye professional and they're coming back and their eyesight has actually gone down and the professional's asking them, what are you doing? And then it turns into talking about pearl powder, talking about sun gazing, you know, talking about using, you know, eye exercises, moving your eyes, because what I realize is we're not feeding them, we're not working them, and we're not engaging them enough. And then they begin to fall apart. But pearl powder, I feel, is a very crucial part for that, for feeding the eyes. Yeah, actually, if you, if you want, I know that we haven't really, you know, got that far into the integration yet, but we'd be happy to <clears throat> put it in our affiliate program if you were set up to do that. Oh, of course. Yeah, definitely. I would love to, you know, and I, I think it would help more people 
with the eyesight issue because it seems to be a big thing. You know, I mean, our yeah. eyes, I mean, even these screens, you already know, these screens are just messing up our eyes and then that's we're, we're not. Ex that's what I use these. I use these um, for the screens, but um, but I've been reducing my, I've been reducing my, my, my prescription, um, constantly. And, um, and I, I went, I bought a program years ago from, uh, and it's endorsed by the American Ophthalmology Society and it's an, and it's an eye rebalancing program. And I, so I, what happens, what I found though, is that when the face shifts, like we're doing fascial maneuvers, our face is shifting. The actually pulls the muscles out of alignment. So it, so if my face was like this, and then and then I retrain my eyes, then when my face shifts, I have to retrain them again. So, so what I what I've been doing is just gradually reducing, and then waiting for a final point or a point where I'm not going to have to reprogram my eyes, and then doing the like you said, the eye rebalancing. Well, and I think of the you know the lazy eye situation is the same thing like you just described. These muscles on the side of the eye have become weak over time, and then the eye begins to trail. You know, so if we don't train them and we don't actually go in circles and we don't move them, then all of a sudden the eye falls apart and our screens, I think about all the time, you're just straight on. Like I'm looking straight at you. I'm not looking to the right or the left or anything else. It's always straight on. And a lot of times we don't blink too. So, you know, the, the eye becomes dehydrated over time. So, you know, it's really interesting because everybody used to do all of this. You know, the eye exercises go back. Everybody used to, you know, stare at something and you could go forward and back. They used yeah. to use pin, pinhole glasses, yeah. like the, like you said, lowering your prescription and then using pinhole glasses. Yeah. But it's interesting because when I got into the eye thing too, I was researching into Dr. John Ott, Health and Light, mm -hmm. and his whole work with light and how we're blocking the UV spectrum as well. And that's what all this glass, all the glasses, all the contacts, all the things are blocking that UV spectrum. That's actually very healing. So we, we've been told so many inverted things and we have to kind of just do the opposite of what we've been told so we we, we, uh, we work with viva rays and this guy has done more uh, practical science on it because what happened is he went and got all the blue blockers and tested them and they're blocking blue but there's different frequencies and yeah. they're blocking blocking the wrong frequencies so he does balancing and then he has a yellow he has a uh, magnetic clip on it goes yellow and then red so that actually you get your circadian rhythm in. And um, we have them on our, in our partner store. And, um, and I'm actually just, I just got them in a prescriptive format and the prescriptive was wrong. That's why I'm not using them right now. But what he was, his whole idea is, I'm not blocking blue, I'm just, filter, I'm just rebalancing. I'm filtering the ones that are deleterious. I like that. And that, that I think is important to realize because if the screen is always giving you blue, you know, you need the rest of the spectrum. You can't just have a blue all the time. And if you're always getting red, you can't have red all the time. You right. know, both of those, and, you, it, it, and that's why like the sun is so beautiful because you get all the spectrums. And when you get into sun gazing, you know, the benefits of that, you're getting the red, the orange, the yellow, all those hues, and then the purple, that's also missing, you know, from the equation. And those are so healing for the eyes versus if, if you were looking up at the sky at 12 noon, you know, you'd be, <laughs> You wouldn't be able to see too much after about five minutes because you get your it's so much white blue and yellow and it's just kind of coming through the eye but the beautiful times of the sunset and sunrise are so beneficial and i saw your video you were doing sun gazing and showing people yeah and how beneficial it is to do because it's you know it's there for us to to for us to heal with well it's it's so what happens is is that you know our, our point was at the time I mean, there's a lot of different reasons about it, but even forgetting about eye vision, it, it's how your, our body fires hormones based upon like food is not a fuel. Our breathing is, is the electricity and then hormones take away that electricity. And the, the way that the body fires the spectrum of hormones is based upon the spectrum of light. So if you take away a spectrum of light, you misfire hormones. And that's why we put certain chemicals in the sky because it actually selectively filters out light and then that changes the hormonal complex and it's like you know if you give i'm, I'm an old bodybuilder <laughs> testosterone uh you're gonna have a little bit of anger issues so what they're doing is is that we have these we have these issues in society a lot of them are driven by hormones that they're doing to everybody at the same time yes and the color spectrum plays a big role 
-hmm. you know, because if you're just getting blue light, you know, like moonlight all the time, you're going to turn into a lunatic, yeah. you know? So if you, like you said, there's, if they're blocking a certain spectrum of the color and you just keep getting that blue instead of all the other colors, you're going to get a little crazy, yeah. you know? And then you add the full moon to it and it's amplified even more during that time with the polarity shift of your mind and the rest of your body. So we, so I noticed that in Canada, we live out on the coast and we face, uh, we face West. And so that, that's that Lions Bay. And we notice that they, that we get sprayed right across at the end of the day to block the sun going down. And, but when we're in Mexico, um, there's virtually no chemtrails here. They happen. I can see them from time to time, but not on a general rule. And, um, and I noticed that, that the, the thing I can notice very differently is my energy throughout the day is very different. I completely agree with you. And that's why when I was back in Chicago, and I had my gym and I was in the fitness world, it was always cloudy. And I noticed it was more cloudy than ever sunny. Like all the time it was cloudy. And that was the barrage, like you were saying, in the sky, making it dark all the time. You know, and as I moved out to here to Arizona, it's, you know, a lot more sunny, a lot more energy, but there's not as much of that. And there's a lot of things that people are doing to block, or not to block, but to remove a lot of that from the sky. Cause you can do things like Wilhelm Reich, Trevor James Constable and electroculture, yeah. you know, all of those can rebalance what's up in the air too, because everything that's on the ground is also happening up in the air and it's all, you know, vice versa. Yeah, we, we even back at the original human garage clinic, we had cloud busters above us and you could actually see it punch in LA, punching a hole in the clouds. It's kind of, kind of cool. That's all. So, so what are you what are you seeing now like from um i mean you get a lot of feedback from people and stuff like that what is what's in what are people saying right now like what are you feeling it's out there in in, in people or, or what are they talking about right now well i mean i guess everybody's just trying to focus on you know the solution situation like you said trying to heal the body you know clean up the body cleaning up the water the food you know their environment you know, things with electric culture really took off when I started talking about that for people's gardens and people growing their own food. You know, I think I think the shift is continuously kind of like this. I think really 2020, they kind of opened the box of everybody pretty much realizing the truth on everything. And, you know, even like people send me a message and say, I want to follow you. You know, I want to learn. I want to have information. And I think that's a big shift because in 2020, when that badge was kind of coming out, people didn't really kind of see it they just kind of you know it came up and they're like ah oh, it's probably false and whatever so i think i think humanity as a whole is really waking up to a lot of things i mean even in stuff i was talking about with the moon and how the moon was doing all kinds of weird things and going in all different directions yeah yeah what is, what is it what is that i mean like like literally i i see the moon up the uh i see the moon upside down with a star above it looks like the it looks like uh I think it's Czech Republic or communists where there's like a, the flag has a moon upside down star above. I've never seen like that before. Yeah. So with that, that one, it's been interesting with the moon because yeah, it's been doing a lot of weird things. And I, I actually watch, I have a mountain behind me and I watch the moon come up from that spot every time. But then on certain days, it'll just start going the opposite direction and then like go over to the right. Then the other day it'll start going to the left. Then some days it just won't come up. Like on, for example, around the full moon, it comes up like, almost three hours later over here. Or like you said, that little star that's kind of floating around or the Jupiter as they call it or whatever. But that little star that's kind of floating around doesn't follow the moon. But then other days it's following the moon. You know, so there's, there's so much stuff that's really strange with the moon. And the day that I saw the eclipse, you know, I kind of saw the moon in a different fashion because I, I stared at it for about 20 minutes. I just looked directly at it while I was not being told to do and whatever else. But it was interesting because I watched the moon during the day, which looks like it's completely transparent, you know, almost like yeah. it's just this transparent, you know, plasma. Then it went in front of the eclipse and it looked like water bubbles. And then, you know, at nighttime when the sun is gone, it looks like it's solid, you know, so it does all these different, it's transmuting the entire time, but then going all these different directions. And it was interesting because there was an article that came out with David Copperfield about how he wants to make the moon disappear in February of 2024. Yeah, and, I saw you know, that. What do you think of that? I thought, I thought it was, I mean, I thought it was really strange, but then he said, we've been playing games like for the last couple of months and testing it out. So then I thought, well, maybe that's why everybody's reporting the moon's missing. You know, I think, you know, it, 
it's, it's an interesting thing because there's three days where the moon goes missing and they say it goes underneath the horizon. But then the question is, what is the horizon? What is underneath the horizon? Where, where is that? You know, is that in the earth? Like it's, it's, you know, it's just a very interesting thing to kind of think about. But, you know, if you start following the moon and you start following the stars, because I watch the stars at night, you can see the stars do the same pattern, but the moon just does whatever it feels like, you know? And sometimes with the sun too, the sun will come up and go real low and then other days it'll go up higher. And I've yeah. noticed, I don't know if you've noticed while sun gazing, when the sun is setting, it will set in different places, almost like if it's hotter on one day, it'll set to the right. And then if it's colder, it'll set to the left. I actually, so, so what happened was, yeah, the first time I became aware of this is 2020, that about that time we hit the sun gazing video because we were gazing every day and we have mountains that it goes over same spot and it was going over here and then all of a sudden it was about 15 degrees over to the other side instantaneous like overnight and i'm like did, did, did somebody not did like did nobody notice this am i the only one i took pictures of it i got it over here over here and then the next day it's over there and i'm like yeah i mean how does it move like 15 degrees and how does it do it in one day yeah and that's those are questions I think we should ask, you know, because a lot of the stuff we're fed is just the same repetitive stuff, but you know, things that are just very strange and just, you know, things that don't make any sense. Cause like you said, it's only been 24 hours, you know? So if you look at the time, if time is relevant and whatever, but if you look at the time, you know, you start to sit there and think, huh, that really moved really far. And then you think of like whatever your weather is or whatever the birds and the animals are doing. And then you can kind of pick up on them too. And I just started tracking it. You know, during the summertime over here, you, I would see the sun moved back and it would be a really hot day and it would be like 110, 120. And then if it was a cooler day, it would move to the left. And I thought, what is going by the temperature? It just moves around based on the temperature. You know, it just, that doesn't make any sense because if we're in the circle or whatever we're in, you know, it doesn't add up to what we've kind of been told. So what is it? Um, um, so, I mean, you got a lot of questions, a lot of people. And, I like the way you do it. You just say, well, here's some information. What do you think? So what do you think? Flat Earth, Round Earth? So, so I think of us as like a holographic fractal, kind of like a, a frequency, you know? And there's, there, there is magnetism involved because you do have a spin factor like hurricanes and tornadoes and the water, you know, the water in your drain is spinning one yeah. way. And then if you go to another spot, it spins the other way. And closer to you, it spins the opposite direction. You know, so there is a spin factor, but I think of it as like, I think of it as almost like a, a giant, you know, frequency or like a fractal. And that fractal is ever expanding because if we think of nature, nature is always expanding. Like if I look at these flowers in front of me, they're always growing, the petals are always growing, they're always doing something. So if the earth is like that, I would imagine it's ever expanding. And we're kind of just sitting on something that's kind of like, spinning with magnetism, producing electricity. And the other reason I say that too is because there's a lot of mercury underneath our feet. Yeah. You know, here in Arizona and, mother, and, and many other places, there's mercury all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, so when I think of like the whole mercury retrograde and everything spins backwards and we have all these electrical disturbances, I think of the mercury underneath us spinning backwards, causing those electrical disturbances. So- Well, that, it's kind of like, if you look at like, um, like uh like lightning you know the the general thought was it came from the sky but it actually comes from the ground well lost you there for a second that's interesting hey guys is a, a viewer can you tell me and put a comment in there let's see if i start getting a comment do you guys uh do you see matt frozen oh interesting isn't that funny uh-huh Sure, that happens a lot. Um, wow. wow. Uh, okay, we'll wait for Matt to come back. <clears throat> yeah, we'll wait for him to come back. That that was just too funny. Right in a very, 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 very uh, sensitive topic. Let's just say. Yeah, I lost him completely. He's gone. Yeah, he'll be back in a second. Okay, hold on. 
Yeah, I mean, this is great. Ice walls, uh, too much truth. Hey, Mark, how are you doing in Vancouver? Looking forward to coming back back to Vancouver. If you guys are in Vancouver, March 16th, come on to the event. It's going to be a good one. It's talking about Mercury and uh, goes, right? Isn't that, isn't that funny? So what do you guys in the, I saw Matt frozen. Uh, can restart if needed. Yeah, so um, it used to happen to me all the time it used to be right when I was about to say something um, and, and as soon as I would say something uh, deliver a piece of truth phones would shut down and things would go can you guys hear me okay yeah speed talking oh you guys are getting back and forth like all kinds of weird weird uh... <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow this is crazy you're fast Fasting for 30 days. Awesome. Thank you for putting that out there. Yeah, we did the 44 day fast. I mean, please document that, share it with people. We want to know what your experiences are. Um, Matt, I'm going I'm to try and. Let's see if I can bring him back. The big of a following. Um, do you guys know what he was talking about um, when he said that you uh, you have to follow him? Do you have to actually put something like I want to I don't remember doing that. I've been following him for a while though. So, around. So, um, are you guys, we are talking about the moon. Is there any questions that you have? Yeah. Fake Santa, I celebrate with him. Okay. okay. Oh, Matt. I, uh, I mean, Matt's probably out there going, what happened? Hey, first day of uh, Lifestyle Artists. So excited. Yes. Major detox in the last two days. Hey, Matt, put up, um, uh, if you're back there, just say something in the comments. Um, but this, this is actually pretty normal, I would imagine. Uh, when, you, when you push the edges of these conversations, it just seems like things go wrong, and I'm not exactly sure. Why do you think that is? Put in the comments why you think that is. <clears throat> Fasting for 30 days, yes. Frozen, frozen, how to get rid of tension. Reminds me of the Truman Show. Yeah, I mean, have you thought about it? I mean, sometimes I feel like I'm in the Truman Show. I uh, missed uh, days in the 28 day reset. No, if you've missed, I mean, if you've missed two weeks, yes, but if you missed a couple of days, do not restart. Just go in and also there are, um, if you're in the 28 day reset in the app, uh, you can, there's calls, um, there's classes happening almost like, I think every day of the week almost. And there's uh, support groups that are going on. You can get on Zoom and talk to other people. Um, they're listening, watching. Uh, totally feel like the Truman Show. Yeah, yeah. I, <clears throat> you know, I think maybe he hit a button, right? What is pearl powder? Um, pearl powder is uh, literally made from pearls. It's powder. Um, you can buy it from Matt. Uh, we'll put it up on our site. We'll get it um, so that you guys can buy it. Um, but you can go buy it from him right now. Don't worry about us. If you want it, need it, go buy it from him. It has it has a very you see. It's not just the minerals. It's also the balance in which they come in, and and the balance in which they come in are really, really, really super important. So, for example, like um, like people like I can't take iodine. Well, but I can take Irish sea moss because they're balanced out with other ones to support it. It's what happens is when you take something that's out of balance, it throws your hormonal balance off, which changes the way your body works. And the pearl powder is super good. As a matter of fact, I haven't done it in years. I'm going to get some from that myself. Wow. What if they shut his account down? Somebody, uh, 
Want to go to his account and see if he's uh, see if his account's still good? Yeah, Pearl has the same mineral composition as teeth. You uh, ingest it. I know some people uh, use it to brush your teeth with too. December thirteenth, global cyber issue predicted. You know, if it is, it is. Um, I can tell you right now that worrying about it doesn't do anything. Uh, everything that you planned for and worried for didn't happen, uh, and the, in the in the finite amount, everything that you didn't plan for did happen. Uh, no, I've been taking pearl powder. It's not that's it, my teeth are. It's not a teeth problem. My body is resetting. Um, I'm having the, the the discussion. It's not a problem, guys. It's listen. Everything in my entire body is the best and youngest and feeling the best it ever has been. So this can't be wrong. But you guys remember when I was started this journey, my body got really fat. There he is. I see here. My body got really fat there for a minute. Got kicked out. <clears throat> wow. I guess if you talk about mercury, that's like... Which the, that was it. So well, I guess we just you, have to talk about the planet <laughs> and Mercury. I guess. And you said I, I heard you say lightning because you were going to describe lightning, and then that was it. It was like an electric shock, and that was it. Yeah, I think uh, I, I I think um, you know that my background. I, I I don't know. Do you know my background? You told me a little bit about it last time we talked yeah. and everything. With you told me about fitness and health and bodybuilding and everything. Well, I used to encrypt data actually yes I, uh, yes yeah and then and uh they they i didn't want to give my data to the u.s government so they they uh they detained me gave me a holiday for 27 months and what and uh so i mean i've been used to um i was part of a company called uh, id certified um i worked on the carrier side to provide it we changed the notary public law in the state of washington back in uh in the late 90s to issue a digital signature that was legally binding. So it was the first blockchain in the world, technically. It was a, with oh. a digital signature. And, we, and Boeing uses it today to legally sign documents for defense contracts. And um, from that day forward, when we were encrypting data back then, um, they, that's when I know as a fact that, that I was on their radar and they followed me. For a lot of years, for about 15 years, they. I would have somebody on a seat next to me or in a restaurant next to me. And after a while, you just get to know them. You see the same guys, you recycle them over time. I'm like, yeah, you were the same guy over in Chicago. You're the same guy in London. I mean, there's no chance that that is. So I used to go up and talk to them. I like that. I mean, this, this used to happen a, a while back with me and my buddy when we used to talk on the telephone. His phone would turn off, my phone would turn off, and then I would call him an hour later and say, they, you know, somebody's obviously paying attention to our it's a juicy conversation is what it is. That's what. <laughs> that's yeah, what yeah, because, because we're, we're taught that uh, mercury is harmful, but it's actually quite the opposite of it, you know? Yeah. And, and it, the other part too, is I was saying about, you know, cause somebody was asking about pearl powder and um, uh, while you were gone. And by the way, did your account reset or just get kicked no, off? No, the whole internet went down. That's actually why I had to pull everything out of the wall and everything so that it would turn back on. Huh. It was actually just a, like the light turned completely red and then it was disconnected. And then I unplugged everything, plugged it back in, still said red, then changed and finagled the cords and then it turned back on. Right. And that's happened before. Like sometimes if I've clicked websites on Brave Browser, you know, it'll instantaneously say DNS, you are now not connected. Yeah. And then the internet, you know, goes down. Yeah, I mean, I mean, my background is, uh, is you know, from the surveillance world. So I, I know the tools that they use. And, and and it's you know at this stage they it's just uh, uh, this is auto, this is artificial intelligence so it's not there's not somebody there listening to the well there probably is somebody there listening to the conversation but but there's not somebody there listening to the conversation um, and shutting stuff off but there are there are topics that that are and what I found is that it's just disruption yeah so it's like it, it's not like they shut things up. they just make it hard every time you want to have a conversation so yeah the, when, when i researched into wilhelm reich the museum yeah that was his website or that museum website is one of those where if you click it it just says your internet has been disconnected 
So it's like, it's, that's one of them where, you know, that, but that goes into the weather. Like we were just talking about too. You can balance all that stuff out that's going up there. And Wilhelm Reich was notorious for cleaning up the skies. Yeah, yeah for sure. So, so where, where, where are you going at? Like, where do you, uh, do you have a plan on where this goes in the next, let's say a year or two? With Cultivate Elevate or just in general? Yeah, yeah, with Cultivate Elevate. I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, put as much information out there as I can. I've been working on more things with the, with some new products and coming up with some more superfoods to heal and address different root causes of different pathways, which have been disabled. And that, that's kind of where I got into Pearl. You know, when I got into Pearl, I started realizing, well, this is feeding the spleen, which is then connected to the rest of the body, you know, and even when I got into dragon's blood, it feeds the skin you know, the largest detox pathway. So, you know, my thing is trying to figure out, well, what can we, what can we address? What can we heal? How can we do that? And then also too, I've done a lot with the electroculture side of how we can amplify our food so that we don't have the, you know, food shortages and all the other stuff. But I've been dabbling into a lot of stuff with static fields and it's really fun to kind of learn about and understand like everything with static fields and how much things can happen utilizing static fields. So, I want to move more into that and then I'm going to move into more stuff with color like we were just talking about because I think color is just remarkable and like even the clothing color that you wear and things like that. Yeah. It's such a side that's always just missing and I think also needs to be talked about. Yeah, I mean, we're, uh, so the way that we, um, people think we work with the body, but actually I describe it as, uh, you know, we're so egocentric. We have a body, we have an aura. And we can test that aura. They can call it an entropic field. We have equipment. We had science equipment back up in Canada that we were testing with. And you can test your chakras too. And, and it shoots a, a laser, it shoots a photon at your finger, off gases. So we, this is going back a long time ago. But the, the challenge is, is that I think I have a field, but the truth is there's a human experience, which is a ball of energy. And, at the, and part of that energy I can see with my naked eye which is the actual physical structure, which is in swirls. And, and we're water, we're 70% water, 25% silica, sand, basically 5% bacteria, viruses, and parasites. And only 10% of our cells are human cells. So technically we're a government over top of bacteria and viruses. And we have 380 trillion viruses, but we only have 50 trillion cells. So that means that we have viruses that have viruses that have viruses. It just- yeah. It could- it gets wild when you get into it and especially the whole the water situation because if you think of your whole body as you know you said 70 to 80 percent water then whatever you decide to drink out of or whatever you decide to wear or whatever you decide to put onto your body is going to take on that structure you know whether it's the gold silver copper you know jewels lapis you know your your body takes on that and same with toxins and it's all one part we just are never really talked about like how if you absorb a toxin, you know, it's going to go into every water molecule of your body. Yeah. And it's just something we just don't. And you got water behind you. I can see you with the pool. And, you know, even with that, you know, they have those, um, the, uh, the, the, the salt, the salt filters and everything yeah. with that, because you're using salt and chlorine and those things. But it's just, it's, there's so much in this of what our body takes on. And, you know, we can either take on a lot of toxins or we can just keep elevating and keep fixing and restoring. And that's kind of what I've, tried to see how much can be how much can we regenerate because i think we're way beyond what we really even can think of and like you said the aura thing reminds me of kirlian photography yeah and that whole situation where they're you know observing the coronal discharge all around the body so so yeah i mean we we are way i mean my my premise from a clinical side was if i can cut a liver in half and it regrows in six months when it's necrotic if we get it early enough, they'll cut, they'll actually surgically cut it in half and regrows. I'm like, then why wouldn't we regrow a gallbladder? And I have personally seen over a thousand gallbladders regrow. So then that means that if you can, the liver by, by definition is arguably the second most important organ. It's the pharmacy, 400 functions, 400,000 variations. So, so if you can grow that, you can grow anything back. And the, the bigger question is why doesn't it? And the why doesn't it is what human garage has been you know taking on for many years and the more and more i go at it basically our bodies are designed to heal themselves all these things stimulate something like for teeth um i'm i'm in a i'm i i let my and both my canines which are connected to my 
grief, um, and which is uh, both my canines just literally turn black. And, um, and I have all the right mineralizations. I can test it. I know I've, I've done everything. I've used profile. And, um, and there's something that goes beyond where we're going. We're having an evolutionary shift. And that means that our bodies are starting to act not the way that they did before. And what we're doing is, I don't pretend to even, even know exactly how it's going to go. I just, I'm tracking it. Because things are happening in people's bodies every day that we can't explain. Well, and I like that you said that because I was thinking about that with plants the other day. You know, everybody cuts plants with iron tools. And then you ever think about it, the plant doesn't regrow or begins to grow again. Now the question is, is if we used copper or bronze or a different material, would the plant begin to grow? Oh, yeah. And you know, I think of like our bodies the same way. If we have all this like iron, kind of gunking everything up, you know, you got cast iron and everything else, like all this iron, 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 maybe that stops the growth process or the regrowth process for, for the organs too. Because like you were saying, when you're probably doing the lymphatic techniques and you're rubbing things out and moving them, you're getting it flowing again. And then that organ most likely begins to regenerate and heal because now those pathways are connected again. Yeah. So it makes me wonder, you know, same thing with the plants. If, if you're snipping everything with iron or if we're putting all the iron into our body and it's blocking things up, then it probably becomes very challenging for things to regrow. And it was interesting because I was watching a, a video with Dr. Sebi and he was talking about how the body is copper and carbon and everything is copper and carbon. So if we're missing that beautiful mineral, then our body doesn't regrow like a salamander. You know, and you, you, you know the whole thing with salamanders, they'll regrow yeah. their legs and they'll yeah. regrow their tails. And then if you think of like the eel, it produces electricity because of the copper inside of it as well. But it's like we're missing these beautiful trace minerals and then we can't regenerate or, or restore balance. And then when we start bringing them back, that's what I noticed and that per pearl actually contains copper. But, you know, when we start bringing those things back, things start regenerating and restoring like that. Yeah, I mean, that was my journey. I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm the lightest. I haven't been this light. I'm 165 pounds. I haven't been this light since I was 14 years old. But I have two to three times the strength that I do by reducing fascial restrictions. And when people touch us, it's really weird. It feels like jelly, but, but I, we can pump it up. And yep. we did this by gradually reducing muscle over time. And it's an experiment. I mean, I experimented 35 years ago, 40 years ago, building my body with muscles. And I built up to 230 pounds and competed nationally. And I said, well, that didn't work because if you look at the current architecture of people who've been building muscle, they're all really sick or messed up. So, we, so I just thought, well, there's another way to do this. And, and where does strength come from? Like, like we work with fascia. If you were to restrict your shirt like this and lift the arm, it restricts it. That's fascial restriction. That's a meridian that goes through there. Right here is long. And if, that, if I have grief that restricts there, now I'm restricted in my range of motion, which means in order to use it, I have to fire more hormones. Hormones are what ages. So you know what? You're talking about the swirl. You want to try something with me? Sure. Take your elbow like this. Give it a good torque outward. Put it above your head. Pull in your spine, pull in your belly button, and just hold it with that torque. Just hold it and then and feel what you feel in your body. Breathe, so pull your spine in tight. Feel your hip, the hip on the same side. Feels great. Yeah, it's, it's rotating at the hip. So just keep doing it. Turn your head back and forth a little bit. And then wait for the hip to drop. Did your hip drop yet? No, it's 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 pretty tight in there. I do kettlebells. <laughs> it's, okay, just keep, keep, keep it going. Right, are you right? Is that your left? That's your left. That's maybe why. This is my right side, so maybe that's probably why. Just keep it in there. Breathe. Move your head back and forth. Lean over. A little bit to the opposite side. Like lean over, like. Oh, to the side. Yeah. Turn your head towards the elbow. Okay. 
come on up and then just walk around a little bit and see how you, your right, right side of your body feels with your left side. That feels nice. That's a, that was a good stretch. Anytime you stretch, that so, was going to say for 10 minutes. So what we're doing is we're applying a rotational tension to, a, to the humerus. And that's not funny, by the way. Um, and that rotational tension swirls down. And that was the theory of the fascia work, is we saw the fascia operating in rings, not the, not the fascia lines that we see. So we were operating in a clinical setting. But I, mean, I, I do this all the time. I, I take a 22 degree scoliosis in August or July, and I reversed it in one hour live. Wow. Complete, complete reversal. And I post the whole thing live because people go, yeah, that's bullshit. You didn't do it. I'm like, no, the whole thing from start to finish is live. And the idea is, is it's a swirling factor. The body likes counter rotation, uh, which is a swirl. Huh. I like, I like I, that's actually interesting that you said that. Cause when I, when I was into NASM and I did their whole protocol and studied that with uh, personal training, you know, their big thing was obviously rotation and training and rotation to create the strength. And when I used to do a lot of like strongman and train with my buddies with that situation, everything was moving every different direction. You know, that's what made the strongman the strongest because they're doing things and they're, you know, you're carrying a stone and moving that stone from every direction, not just front to back, like the traditional weightlifting and things like that. But that, that makes perfect sense. Well, here's another and I like one. How you said. Think, about it. think about it this way. So the body adapts to the environment and the, you look at the body in great moments of stress and you'll see the highest point of adaption. So one of them is a fetal position, right? So if you, but if you think about if I'm standing here and I want to generate power, like, yep. or golf, these are all counter rotated fetal positions. So all the fascial maneuvers are counter rotated positions because the body knows how to adapt at that position more than any other state of awareness. That actually makes sense because there, there is the opposite rotation that happens. Yeah. And then, like you said, with the fascia, that's funny that you say that because all the pictures are straight lines. You know, whenever they show you your muscles, everything's in a straight line. Well, they, but we, they, we so know everything the, curves, wow. you know? Yeah. I'm actually rotating. And, you know, we even go as far as, you know, our, our philosophy was, and we proved it scientifically, is that the muscles don't move the body. The muscle stabilizes the movement of the fascia. Because if you put electricity on a muscle, it just goes boom. Yeah. It goes boom. <laughs> so that, there's no intelligence there. So all of this is not the muscle, it's the fascia. Huh. And then here's the other thing too, is each cell has 1.4 volts of charge. You could actually put a voltage meter on it, every cell in your body. So negative and positive on the outside. So that means that you have 50 trillion cells, you have 70 trillion volts of electricity in your body. The question is, why aren't we using it? And our fascia is, is silica and water and bacteria. We're a crystal. Yep. And if you clog that crystal, what do crystals do? They amplify signal. That makes that's why we, that's all these heavy metals. This is where, this is why people that have Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, that's why we have people that, I mean, it's online every day with us. People with Alzheimer's um, or people with Parkinson's, uh, basically, you know, massive stutters, six months later, no stutters. And I, again, not me claiming, it's them and it's online and it's proof. Like they could actually, they posted their own video. I like that. That's, that's, and that's a, another way of addressing the root cause, yeah. you know, because all of these natural remedies were all defunded back in the 19, 1910, 1920s. Yeah. So I'm happy that you're, you know, showing people examples and ways that they can heal. And yeah, the connective tissue is huge. And even when you think of stability of even just weightlifting, you know, and everything that you're doing, you know, that, that the connective tissue is what's making you fail for the most part. You know, you, you, you can usually do the movement, but it's the connective tissue. It's all blocked up in your shoulder. You're not going to have any, you, you, you have no movement, you know, and you can't rotate. You can't do anything. You're like a, like a, <laughs> kind of no, like that. Here, you know? Here's one for you, since your kettlebells. Well, like this with your arm with your hand open to okay. your range of motion. Okay. Yeah, that, I, I, my posterior delt is always tight. And okay, now I close, close your fist. It okay. restricts your range of motion. Oh, yeah. So this is why, I, when, this is why uh, grabbing a bar causes a restricted range of motion, which causes an injury long term. That makes 
So this is where, I mean, my, my, my whole bread and butter was taking Olympic and professional athletes and, and getting them to move. And one of the ways to do it is to remove the patterns that cause the dysfunction. And, huh. and here's another one for you. Um, none of the bones in the body touch except for the rib cage, the teeth and the ears. So how could the bones be structured? Structure is nailed up here. So, oh. so if you think your knee like this, yeah. with, what's, what's the structure? Well, it's not the meniscus. If it touches, it rips. If there's only one muscle that goes past the knee from the top to the bottom. It's, there's no way that holds it up. Tendons keep it from pulling apart. So what's left? The only structure is fascia. Yeah, that makes sense. So then the fascia is then falling apart, which is then leading to the cracking of the knees instead of the other way around where you're missing. Okay, it's here's like, a good one. They say See, we, we have, we have, we're organic and we're wet. If you take bones inside of a, a, a mushy jelly substance, would they make a sound? No, they would. They, yeah, so where, where does the cracking go? I mean, I, I practice chiropractic. Yeah. So. Where does the cracking go? Where does the cracking come from? It comes from the pressure distribution from the layers of fascia moving. It's not the bones. Our bones don't crack. Our, nice our, our fascia, because it crystallizes. That's why we get fluoride and we get stuff like that. It causes the crystalline structure to literally crystallize. And then that's what you hear moving and creaking. Huh. Interesting. That, makes, that, that, that would make sense. I mean, you have all the toxin buildup in there. And now you're turning into almost like a rock, if you kind of think about it. Because like all, yeah, all the fashion, everything's all blocked Fiberglass. up. It's like, yeah, Fiberglass it's like a, just, first. Yeah, like it, like a, like almost like almost like a tumor, and that's like a, a tumor that's just not moving. Well, that's what a tumor. And that, is. in my yeah. opinion, that's what a tumor is. Basically, there's all these flows. Think of fascia like baklava, right? Filo pastry. Is delicious. pastry. <laughs> yeah, filo pastry has all the sweet, the honey, and the oil going through it. That pastry and the fascia is like that. And then, but if you, if you stress it, boom, it becomes a pie crust, like a coating. So this is why we look at a body today and we think fascia is a coating around a muscle, but actually fascia is a liquid gel that, that inside bones that don't touch at, with muscles attached to them, tendons to the areas are working inside that gel. And if you electrocute the muscles, it's involuntary. So that means that the muscles aren't controlling the movement. I actually, we, that makes sense. we did a nerve conduction testing. Uh, the, the simple example was a foot. It takes a second and a half for a nerve signal to go from there up to the brain, through the mucus and cell, the cerebellum back down for motor control. So I asked a question, because I didn't go to school for medicine. I learned in practice. And I asked a question when we were doing this nerve conduction test. So how do we move when we step on glass? And they're like, oh, ganglion reflex. <laughs> and I'm like, that means if I stepped on glass, I'd go boom. Yeah. But I don't. I move intelligently to safety. Yep. That before the brain knows that there's danger, the body's moving intelligently to safety before the brain even knew to engage the muscles. So, yep. so my thing was, okay, I, I'll, I'll agree. I don't know. But I can tell you that you don't know. So let's just say we don't know and let's figure this out rather than say that muscles are moved by the brain and the nerves. I like, I like that. And that's, and that's the best way, because, you know, a lot of the stuff, even with when we were talking even about the planets and everything else, nobody has a true idea of anything. It's all pretty much the, the, the assumption, you know, the, or the theory of something. So, you know, it's, a good to, it's good to scale back, and especially the ego, because with the ego, we can always feel, you know, oh, I, I, I know it all. I don't know. But in shit. reality, it's like there's a lot of stuff we have no idea. I don't know shit. A lot I of know how to program the body, but yeah. I don't know shit. Yeah. Because here, here's one for you. Here's another one. 2.2 proteins run every function in the body. We know that there's 2.2 million, or we've identified 2.2 million protein, but we have only identified or labeled 50,000 of them, and we only know what 5,000 of those 50,000 do. So we only know what 5,000 of 2.2 million do. How can we say that we even have a basic understanding of the body? I just say it's all bullshit. We don't know crap. Yeah, yeah. And then when you go into how you know, a lot of stuff that people did know before the 1920s and the whole Flexner report and all of that stuff, you know, a lot of that information, and that's why I'm always trying to read books from before 1920s, because it's a very different standpoint when you read about energy, meridian lines, you know, terrestrial magnetism, you know, all these different topics. It's very different in the 1920s, even the ether, 
You know, they removed the ether from the periodic table in 1908. So they got rid of all stuff related to ether. So if you think of your body related to ether, well, after 1908, that topic's not talked about. So now you're just a physical thing floating around, you know, with fascia and everything else. That's all very physical to touch, but they're, they're, they're removing, you know, the, the, the energetic principles from there. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, like what you're saying when you, you know, if you're cracking things and moving things, everything's energy, you know, so you're restoring the energy pathways. And if those are getting all blocked up and you start cracking and moving everything through, now that energy starts flowing, which also then imp amplifies the energy of your aura and your essence, you know, and, and that can also be transmuted through the eyes when I was looking into how people used to study the eyes and the teeth. And it's interesting that you say the same stuff with the teeth because we're showed, we are shown a thing with pearly whites, which is funny because pearls, you know, and that yeah. whole thing, but we're it's shown a thing with, you know, perfect teeth and perfect, you know, the white color. But then the question is, is how true is the color of things? You yeah. know, we've been shown something for so long a period of time, but then we're not shown very healthy people who have lived to like 120 and what they look like, you know, and all these different things. You're, you're always shown a certain way. So it's, it's interesting when you get into all of this because your eyes and your teeth can determine so much and show what your organs are doing. Same with like you were saying, your fascia could determine what everything's going on inside without cutting it open. You know, you don't got to cut it. You just can see it and, and mess with it. You know, so it's like there's there's so many ways of us going back to the ways of understanding our body and really connecting to our body rather than someone telling us our body. You know, like this is what you you're genetic, you know, it's genes and that whole should be on. It's like, how, how, do, how does that even make any sense? You know, and just well, you like you said, if you only have a small number, 5000 of 50 million, how could you determine that it was genes? Well, you don't even know the, the other, you know, 50 million. So it's just, it's funny when you get into well, it. Well, because I, I, I came from, I came from science, more of a data science background. And when I got into the body, I just said, there's these big gaping holes. And, and there's about one third of the time in the discussion about the body. If you ask a question, why does that happen? They'll give you an answer. Okay, well, why, why does that happen? One third of the time by the third question of why <laughs> the answer is that's just how it is yeah and, and yeah. i'm like that, that, that doesn't work i mean there everything in this body it's the most sophisticated fluid adaptive biological computing system on the planet so that means that 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 there is no accidents everything has a reason and i allowed you know i allowed people around me my practitioners and that said they don't know I allowed them to say, I don't, I'm not smart enough to know. I don't want to know, but you can't tell me that's how it is. Yeah. I like that you said that because that was the whole 2020 thing. You know, when you ask, you know, well, you know, you start asking questions about 2020 and 2021, all of a sudden the whole narrative starts falling apart. You know, why can't I go out past 8 PM? You know, the germs are going to get me past 8 PM. Well, couldn't they get me at 7:59? you know, or, <laughs> or, or 7:42? you know, it's just, all these things that you start questioning and you start seeing the narrative fall apart. And like you said, they only have a limited amount of information to present to you to give you a very baseline, you know, theory. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's just, you can go into this in so many paths, but it's like, once you start, it's like asking an electrician how electricity work. Most people don't know. And it's like, but you install electricity, so you should know. But once you ask four questions, all yeah. of a sudden, you know, things don't make any sense. And as somebody just said with six feet, the six feet the whole situation was your aura can go up to six to 30 feet. Yeah. And if you take people away from that six foot aura, then you disconnect all of their energy from connecting all at the same time. So it's, it's funny because it's a, it's a play on words, but then also, you know, the, the science, but it's like that part of the science I've realized past 1910 is actually all new yeah. versus everything you've been talking about with the fascia you're going yeah. back thousands of years, yeah. you know, so it's who's telling the truth. You know, I can, you can see two different it, ones. It, it's hard to conceptualize because, you know, like if you were to like people always go and they say they bring comes up to me. Well, these are ancient practices, right? And I'm like, OK, well, let's go 2000 years in the future and let's deconstruct our language. Um, that's fact. That's sick. You know, rad, man. Cool. It, how do you inter and, and it changes from time to time, from place to place, from environment to environment to subculture to subculture. 
we can't take ancient, we have to learn ourselves. We can't take all this ancient stuff and just accept it. We have to say, okay, I live in this vehicle. Uh, what does it do to me? How do I interact with it? And then go from there. I like that. And that's, and that's the learning thyself, you know, or learning your body and spending time with nature. Because if you yeah. spend time in nature and you just pay attention to yourself, you know, you'll start to pay attention to everything going on in your body. And even for me, if I've ever had a health ailment, you know, I try to track it back to whatever it was that maybe caused that issue. For example, if someone sprayed, you know, a perfume or cologne and all of a sudden I can't breathe, well, we can see that as soon as that was sprayed with all those neurotoxins and chemicals that are in it, all of a sudden I'm having an allergic reaction. Mm -hmm. You know, and then if it's not that, maybe it's something to do with whatever it could be, some paint or whatever it is. But we have we, we have to use our instinct to kind of track back to that. And I think that's part of, like you said, understanding your body. Because if you understand how everything works, you know, in the mechanical factor and everything else, you can kind of start to go, hmm, okay, well, this is probably resulting in this. And if I do this, I'll probably be better. But when we go to, like you said, the, t to the traditional prof professional, They'll just say it's genetic and you're getting older. And they told me that at 25 years old. When I was 25, they were like, it's genetic. I'm like, and I'm getting older. I'm like, I'm 25 years old. I've been here for 25 years. It's not even that much time, you know? So I'm about to, I'm about to publish my annual photo because um, every year I publish an annual photo and everybody in our program has gotten taller and younger and, yeah. and, um, and, and not even a little bit, uh, like a lot. To the point where I don't, if you go back and watch old videos of me like two years ago, I don't even look like the same human being. And, and the, the idea is I, the human body is not like, I'm, I'm, just, I'm 54. I'm old enough to remember this, but people don't think about it this way. When I was a young kid, 80, 90 year olds were like climbing ladders and picking from the chickens and doing stuff every day. And when they died, they, they didn't look decrepit. Yep. Today, we're, they're 70 years old and they're like this. And yep. even in my time and my 15 years in, in medicine, um, an 80 year old moved pretty well 15 years ago, but today 80 year olds don't move. Yep. And this has been a gradual progression, but like you said, with the time and what they've done with information and history is that we don't, we don't actually see the history. So we don't see it, so we, don't, we can't see where we are in relation to it. And what's changing yeah and that's what it is I, i'll give you a, one that i got um i just i caught this years ago you bought five seven one it was a movie, oh, yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so so anyways they uh the, the submarine goes on a mission to get this telemark machine so that they can win the war and all this and and i'm like great story great story and it's all pretty factual except for one thing um the british are the one that captured it not the americans but there's nobody who's going to read that history. They're just going to watch the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's the same playbook as 1976 when they did the same playbook as 2020 as 1976. But if you didn't, if you weren't around, like you just said for 1976, you wouldn't see the same playbook for 1920 unless you read the notes. And same thing, like you said, with a lot of these, the movies and papers, they, they always, they switch it. They just take one thing out of there and switch it out and then you're like wait a minute I, and then you start believing it and then you start you know kind of you repeat it and then it's ingrained into your mind and then like you just said then you think it's the british that did it but it's like no that's actually not the story and then as i feel that our elders lose the information or forget or have been disconnected from all the wi-fi and frequencies and all of these things you know, then now you have where people don't remember these things and then they get taken advantage of to believe that they need this system, which is just kind of making money off of them rather than healing themselves like they used to do as a kid. You know, yeah. I know like my great grandma and everybody else used to carry herbs and collect things from the garden and make little tinctures. Yeah. And if you didn't feel well, have this and whatever. It, it's only it's only been a hundred years. It's not even that far away, you know? So I, I think we really need to really connect back to that as much as we can because nature gives us everything and there's no side effects it's just beauty you know and that's kind of how i see it that's a, that's a great place to leave it for today um love to uh talk to you we'd uh we will um we'll put you up in affiliate some products for you love to continue to help you out 
Um, I'll send these over some fashion maneuvers to try some new stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I would love to. And I'll, I'll, I'll definitely try them out. And, you know, my right side feels much better now. My left, <laughs> left side's tense and everything. So I'll definitely do the opposite side and switch it up. But, yeah, definitely send me some stuff. I'll send you the, our, our affiliate program, too. And it's really simple. And then uh, you send me all your information and we'll connect as well. But I'm happy we got to do this one and, and not be disconnected for the second half. Yeah, yeah. It was really, really great I, I love talking to you about um i just I, I love the engaging conversations uh one day um sometime shortly wherever we are we have a place in mexico a place in canada and we have some other ones come pop up around the world we'll have you come down and just hang out with us and then we can shoot some video and stuff like that cool that, that works all right my brother well you have a good rest of the day enjoy the sun and i'll see you later take care Bye. Bye. that's awesome if you guys uh follow matt if uh, you're not following him. Listen, I watch him every day. <laughs> I love I love watching his stuff, and I love the way he presents it too. Um, thank you, Matt. Thank you for coming on. And uh, again, uh, December sixteenth, two weeks from tomorrow, in in Vancouver. If you are anywhere close, it's the largest indoor and will be indoor healing event that we have done yet. Um, we have people coming from all over the world. It's going to be a massive event, and I know it's coming up close to Christmas, but this is, people need it right now. There is, there is something going on in the world that you guys haven't felt it. People are getting sick all over the place. And we have the antidote, the antidote's inside of you. You actually have the antidote. Uh, we just wanna show you how to get it out. So thank you guys all for joining in today. Today is Friday. We'll see you again on Monday. Today's Friday, right? Yeah, we'll see you again on Monday. And, uh, um, and if you haven't checked it out yet, uh, go check out our new website. Uh, we've got some very simple uh, releases and simple videos on there. You can go find it. And we put conversations like this. Uh, Matt's Insta is Elevate Cultivate. Uh, Elevate Cultivate. Thank you again, Matt. Take care.